very, very far away and it's a very severe climate, a very hard place to work. It is an extreme environment. There's not many places on this planet that is truly untamed and unexplored. It's mysterious because there's a lot of things going on. They're very, very complex. We live in anxious times on a stressed planet where increasing levels of carbon dioxide and higher temperatures contribute to a host of extremes. More withering heat waves, increased drought, torrential rainstorms. The oceans are rising and becoming more acidic. Earth is a place looking for and needing solutions. Key to a solution is the ability to model and predict our changing climate. And for that, the answer may rest not on land or even in the atmosphere, but in a vast, mysterious body of water the size of Asia, Africa, North America, and Europe combined. The Southern Ocean. The oceans take up about a quarter of the carbon dioxide that we're putting into the atmosphere by fossil fuel burning and deforestation. And of that quarter, fully 50% goes into the Southern Ocean, even though the ocean is just a quarter of the ocean area. In addition to absorbing such huge amounts of the world's greenhouse gases, the Southern Ocean also accounts for about 60% of the excess heat transferred from the atmosphere to the ocean. And this sprawling body of water that encircles Antarctica serves as a kind of mix master to the planet's oceans, a place where different water masses from around the world come together, combine, and then are sent back out, supplying nutrients to a majority of the Earth's seas. Yet despite its critical importance, the Southern Ocean remains one of the least understood and most underexplored regions on our planet. The oceans are chronically undersampled. We do a poor job studying it with traditional techniques despite our best efforts. Now we have something completely new, uh, uh, a, a new way of, of studying this that doesn't require us to be there, which are these floats that are capable of observing the Southern Ocean remotely on very rapid time scales. They can resolve things in time as well as space. The new technologies are going to be the only way we're going to get enough data and the right kind of data to essentially help build the models to simulate future oceans. There's a sense of urgency that I feel that events, climate change, uh, uh, carbon chemistry changes like acidification of the ocean are going to outrun our ability to observe the ocean and to do something about these things. When I see the large changes and I sort of look at it, I have two reactions. First, as a scientist, I get really curious about what's going on. You combine that with a concern about where the ocean's going and how that might affect the planet for my kids, adds a little bit of uh, extra passion to make sure you follow through to try to do the best job you can. Mm -hmm.